Hi everybody, I'm Coral. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here with another trope video and this month I thought it would be perfect to do some real life spooky house stuff. Um, so these are non-fiction. <laughs> I feel like I have to put that in quotes because honestly, I don't think I believed a single fucking person in any of these books. However, that's just me. Some people really believe in this stuff and that's okay if you do. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, I just don't. So um, these are quote unquote nonfiction, like real haunting stories. And I've broken them up into two categories and this just happened to work out perfectly. I've got two books here that were written by the occupants of the haunted house and I've got two here that were written by an actual author. And I think that makes a big difference in how much I like these books, which honestly, this time was fucking like not very much. Uh, even if it was an author writing the book, I still didn't fucking like it. Uh, I just liked it, liked it slightly more um, than the other two. <laughs> so here I am about to unload on you guys. I can't believe I read so many of these. I really like used to think that I like this stuff. And uh, I think I don't. I think I find it terribly boring. And I think maybe I'm very cynical. And so I don't believe much of what's happening here. And I don't know, here I am. Um, <laughs> my cantankerous take on some real haunting stories. I really love shows like this. Like they scare me even though I don't believe them, but I just can't, I don't know the books. I just can't, I just can't. Uh, anyways, first I'm gonna start with The People in the Attic by Doretta Johnson. This was published in 1995. The, uh, the story takes place a couple years before that, um, right at the start of the 90s. And this is about a woman, Doretta. Um, she has a daughter and a son. She's married to her daughter's father, but her son's a little bit older. She had him when she was quite young. And they they buy and move into this house. Uh, they're not a super wealthy family. So it's like kind of one of those Amityville horror things where they find a house for a good deal. But why is it such a good deal? Um, and it's on, you know, kind of a good stretch of land. And... Yeah. It's kind of a weird house. Uh, they start trying to do work on it and it's like no matter what they do, they just can't get anything to work. The wallpaper just slides off. Um, it's just like, it's just too much for me, I think. So yeah, I mean, these all have very similar plots. So I guess I'm not really sure how exactly I should do this, but Doretta and her family move into this house. Um, they're trying to do some work. It's kind of weird almost like they could possibly have hotel rooms that they could rent out and they're trying to make that happen um because it would be a great way for them to make money but it's like no matter what they do there's electrical problems there's problems with um, the wallpaper and s soon after these problems start um their daughter starts getting picked on by something. It kind of escalates from there. However, none of it ever seems very scary. Uh, there, th In this book, there are uh, pictures provided, which I love. Um, those are my favorite things. And there's supposed um, evidence in these photos, but none of this I think is good evidence. I mean, it's just like, a light shining on a door and it's like that could have been you know the light in in the room behind it or in the room in front of it you know what i mean so i don't know doretta had a very tumultuous childhood i'm gonna get into some spoilers for this so if you're not planning on ever reading this book don't worry about it i guess but if this is something that you might want to pick up you might want to skip forward doretta comes to like have this recovered memory which is something that is um you know science just doesn't really think that that's how that works. Um, this is obviously coming off of like the satanic panic where people were having recovered memories left and right of like being ritualistically abused. And this is kind of that same thing where Doretta feels like she has an uncovered memory of being sexually abused, which if that's true, that's terrible. Because of this abuse, now Doretta, Doretta is psychic. 
and um so she's like psychically haunting her family on accident and it's just i really i i'm not laughing um at any abuse that might have happened to this woman i just think that this was a strange way of her it's like it's like she wanted to write a memoir um but she didn't quite know how to do it so she framed it as like a haunted house tale that's not really that that's the end of my spoilers so you might know um i didn't love this book she was just constantly talking about herself and i don't know like i just i have a hard time believing this next i have haunted which was published in 2002 this is the story of a canadian family um who were haunted this is by dora l williams but this is about a family who has kind of a less um tumultuous past they've actually done well for themselves they're buying a new home they fall in love with this like old victorian home and this haunting is much less um like malevolent feeling than in the other books and that kind of makes it not scary uh because nobody actually is harmed it's just some spooky occurrences um, but this is, you know, kind of the same. They have problems while they are trying to remodel the home. They have wiring issues that nobody can figure out. And all in all, it's pretty tame. I don't think that Dora L. Williams is a particularly spectacular writer. But I also don't think that she's trying to be a successful writer. I think she's just trying to tell her story, I suppose, in her own words. And... You know, that's really what this is about. There were parts that I skimmed through because I was just bored to death of reading this book. And I feel, I don't know, I feel kind of shitty maybe saying stuff like that, but um, you know, not that nobody would like this. I just didn't. That's it about this. Okay, now on to the True Haunting books where an author wrote them. First up, we have The Haunting of Alma Fielding by Kate Summerscale, and this one is a little bit different than the others because this one isn't exactly about um, a house being haunted. It's more like the woman, Alma Fielding, being haunted and her maybe having some cyclical, psychic, I don't know, cyclical, psychic powers. This was published just last year in 2020. However, this takes place in the late 30s um, in England. So there's the backdrop of, you know, the beginning of the war, which is really interesting. And this takes place in a time where spiritualism was really big. So there was a lot of um, spiritualists, people who thought that they could like um, summon like past people who were their past lives that they could like summon different entities that um they could like burp up ectoplasm and there were lots of seances and things like that it's a little bit different than um you know the rest of these because there's like no demon in the in the rest of these books there's always talk about like a demon haunting these families but in this case it's like Omer herself being the haunted individual and like manifesting these strange things. So another another difference is that this is this really follows a man named Nandor Nandor Fodor who is Hungarian and he was, you know, kind of a spiritualist and he finds out he hears about this woman Alma and, you know, befriends her and wants to help her because at first it really seemed kind of like a poltergeist haunting where, um, you know, things would just get knocked out of her hands. Um, brushes would be thrown across the room. She would walk past a vendor and see a necklace she liked, and then it would end up in her stocking, you know, strange, very strange things like that. And so this is really the investigation of Alma. And I think this is the one that I like the most out of this, just because it was, you know, a real investigation these people weren't just like, this is what happened, so this is the truth. Nandor really wanted to get to the bottom of this and even, you know, see if Alma needed help. And that's why some of these things were manifesting, some of these strange behaviors and weird tricks she could do. 
and um, I won't tell you how uh, how he feels at the end of this book about Alma. You'll have to read it and find out for yourself. But out of all of, all of these, this is the best written. This is the one with the most concise plot. Um, one that has evidence and uh, is just the most well put together. But it is terribly slow, I do believe. Throughout the whole thing, I was kind of like checking my watch, like, when are we going to be done with this? Uh, but out of these four, if you're going to pick any one of these, I would say probably um, try Alma. Yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about this one. It was the best of the bunch, but still not like a favorite book. Hoo-wee, okay. Um, next is a book that I've read three times, and it gets worse every time I read it. This is The Haunted by Robert Curran, and this was published in 1988. Um, the events happen like throughout the, like the mid to late 70s and into the 80s. And this is about the Smurl family and um, what happened to them in their house. They live in a duplex. On the other side of this duplex is um, the father's parents. So um, I think it's like Mary and Jack Smurl and then there's I don't know. I shouldn't tell you all their names because I'm not 100% sure. But both sides of this house have the Smurl family. And both sides of this house are being haunted by something. However, it really manifests um, the most seriously in like the younger family's house, um, not like the grandparents' house. Oh boy. So yeah, I mean, the Smurls just start to have problems and it starts out um, small, like um, the TV turning on, the lights turning on when they're not home, uh, knocks on the wall, and then it kind of starts to get worse and worse from there to where they're being attacked by demons. And I just found so much of this to be not credible, uh, especially, and I know people are not going to like when I say this probably, but especially when the Warrens get involved in this. And if you um, have watched any of the Conjuring movies, if you watch any like um, haunting type of shows, uh, they've published books. Obviously they've been involved in cases such as Amityville, which is proven to be a hoax, and also the Smurl case, which is probably a hoax. Um, you might know that they just have not a, a squeaky clean reputation, and not even just with um, the cases that they take on, but also with their personal lives. Like, Ed Warren was not a good fucking dude, and it's a really irritating to me that they are, like, hero-worshipped almost now, um, as far as, you know, making a whole fucking movie franchise about them and having them be, like, this adorable, like, couple goals couple when it's, I don't think that's really the case. And uh, so they're involved with this too and things just really get out of hand. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go into some specific occurrences in this book. So if this is the book you're planning on picking up, uh, probably don't listen to this part. I forgot to do this when I posted about, or when I posted, when I was talking about spoilers for people in the attic, but for this, I will hold my book down, and then when I'm done with the spoilery parts, I will hold this open. So I just want to talk about some of the specific beef I have with this. I was so upset I wrote it all down, or most of it down, I guess. One of the big things that they have going on is that um, the people in this family, um, both the father and the mother and one of the daughters are being like accosted by demons in a sexual manner and the husband is actually raped by a demon. Uh, but the things that um, the mother Janet and their eldest daughter are experiencing keep happening in the bathroom. But the mother in particular, they just keep talking about her taking a bath. <laughs> it's like, but if she keeps getting almost raped by a demon why is she taking a bath why isn't she taking a shower you know like i feel like you're at your most vulnerable in just like in the bath or the shower but particularly when you're taking a bath which is like just a longer thing and 
you're laying down and why would you be taking a bath? It's so weird. And they talk about her taking baths all the time. And it's like, why is she doing this if she's like almost getting hurt over and over again? And not to like demon victim blame, I guess, but it just doesn't quite make sense if you're very terrified of this thing happening. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, uh, you know, they also talk about the demon being able to paralyze them, um, to assault them. Then how are these like attempted assaults almost happening? Like if the demon can just paralyze them, why isn't it? I guess maybe it's the power of God. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry, you guys, I'm being such an asshole. I know, but it's just like, I can't get over it. It's a super powerful evil. You know, it's just like all these haunting books. It's a super powerful evil, yet not evil enough to like actually do anything to hurt the family. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, and then I think another big point that I really hated in this book is um, the Warrens repeat in this book over and over again that most cases they have are caused by people dabbling in the occult. So it's like, this happens to bad people. Um, this stuff happens to bad people. If you don't do this bad stuff, then this stuff won't happen. But then um, they say that the demons love to destroy God-fearing people like um, the Smurls. And over and over again, it's like the Smurls, they are a good Christian family. But then why is this happening to them if like, if this only happens to bad people. It just doesn't make sense. Like, which is it? Does it happen to good people? Does it only happen to bad people? Um, I grew up in a, you know, part of my family, my family was split. My parents were just not even married. Like I never, my parents were never together after I was born. And my dad um, was very fucking religious and they wouldn't even like let us watch scary movies because they were like, demons are gonna come into the house through these movies that you're watching. So like, I get it, I get, I get it. Um, and it doesn't make sense. Like I grew up in this, I grew up with this sort of thinking. It's just like, it doesn't make sense. You can't argue that it's because I don't believe it, that it doesn't make sense. Like I grew up um, believing that and it still doesn't make sense. So I don't know. <laughs> That's my beef with The Haunted. And I have to say the first time I read this, I picked this up from the library when I was like, 13 and I was really surprised that my stepmom let me check this out because um, they were very weird about um, the kind of media that I was able to um, consume. So I was very surprised that they let me pick this out and read it and it scared the living shit out of me like so badly that I had to sleep outside my parents room which is like I did not enjoy being around my parents. So like that was the last thing I wanted to do was like um, be out of my private space in my room and like have to sleep outside their room because I was so scared. But that's how bad this book scared me. And it just it hasn't held up. I definitely have um, a more cynical view of things. I definitely have better critical thinking skills, I think. Um, so yeah, the... This is, <laughs> this is gonna be a long trope video because I just am shitting on all these books. And um, once again, I wanna say, if you don't hold my opinion, that's okay. We're all allowed to have our own opinions and this one's mine. And you're watching a video that I created. So of course I'm going to be sharing my opinion. Um, these things are uh, kind of inherently religious because um, people who are not religious, kind of don't believe in demons because they don't really believe in Satan and they don't believe in God. So I know that that can be a touchy subject sometimes um, because like I said of the inherent religious nature of these type of books, but uh, I'm not hating on anyone for having different beliefs than me, just sharing my own beliefs. Uh, thank you for watching you guys. I'd love to hear uh, what you think about these. Maybe, maybe I wanna hear about it. I guess I'll, um, if I hear about it, then I'll, you know, determine whether or not I really wanted to hear about it. Uh, anyways, thank you all for watching. Thank you so much. I will see you guys later. Goodbye.